All right, so today the president wrapped up his trip to England. He held a joint press conference with the British Prime Minister Theresa May. Now, the president discussed America's special relationship with the United Kingdom and so much more. Let's take a look. The relationship between our two nations is indispensable to the cause of liberty, justice, and peace. The United Kingdom and the United States are bound together by a common historic heritage, language, and heroes. The traditions of freedom, sovereignty, and the true rule of law were our shared gift to the world. They are now our priceless inheritance to a civilization. We must never cease to be united in their defense and in their renewal. I would say I give our relationship in terms of grade, the highest level of special. So we start off with special. I would give our relationship with the UK, and now, especially after this two days, uh, with uh, your prime minister, I would say the highest level of special. The president is now in Scotland, where he is scheduled to spend the weekend. And meanwhile, if you thought that the blind hatred for President Trump was kind of unique to the far left, coastal elites in the U.S., well, think again. Today, President Trump's visit right here to the U.K. was accompanied by waves and waves of angry protesters. By the way, as I predicted, whenever America shows strength, we see this, like with Ronald Reagan. And while President Trump was holding important meetings with the prime minister, thousands took to the streets yelling and chanting and holding up their signs and marching around and complaining about pretty much everything from capitalism to everything Trump. But in order to get a more accurate picture of these protests, I actually went down to the protests right in the middle of it, interviewed, well, some of these Trump-hating Europeans face-to-face. -face. Take a look. To protest like everyone else. Just here to protest Trump. I think he's a horrible person and doesn't deserve to come to our country at all. Racist, sexist, misogynistic pig. What is that? That's a Trump. 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 Now, why don't you like the president of the United States? Yeah. I think he's full of basically. That's it. The big did racist, sexist pig. The Trump administration. Um, it's it's quite scary. It's very very scary. It says resist. What are you resisting? Fascism. And who's a fascist? You, actually. I'm a fascist. <laughs> Uh, by the way, I was shocked at how many people knew me, uh, and predictably, as you see, there was a lot of anger, not a lot of serious answers from London's liberal socialist freeloaders. They're living in a fantasy land. Now, stay tuned. We have the full highlights of my time in the middle of this anti-Trump protest. That's coming up later in the show. But first, we have new developments from Robert Mueller's witch hunt earlier today. The deputy attorney general, Rod Rosenstein, he announced the indictments of 12 Russians who were accused of hacking into former Clinton. Clinton campaign chair John Podesta's emails and then leaking them on the internet. By the way, the 12 Russians charged are all GRU agents. That's the Russian version of the CIA. By the way, they'll never be in, they'll never come here for trial. Uh, so it's interesting, and we've got to ask questions about that. And no Americans, Rod Rosenstein said, are suspected now of playing any role in these election crimes. Let me repeat. He said, no Americans were involved. None. Now, despite this, there you go over to Fake News Conspiracy TV, MSNBC, and there's Andrea Mitchell thinking this actually proves a nexus between Trump and Russia two years in, and they're still believing their own lies. Watch this example of fake news. I just want to clarify, it was a, exactly a month later, July 27th, when the, the president said what he said about Russia, if you're listening. And they already were doing their fishing operations. But clearly, there was a nexus between what was happening that summer and uh, the comments of the president. Meanwhile, her colleague, he's no Tim Russert, Chucky e. Todd, he's urging President Trump to cancel all talks with Vladimir Putin. Take a look. It's stunning to me that there isn't a larger chorus here to at least postpone it, right? Why would you, if you recall, President Trump uh, canceled, canceled the North Korean summit for a day, technically based on what he thought was, you know, nasty words that were um, said about Vice President Pence. So he, he threatened to cancel a summit, essentially, for much less than, obviously, the indictment of uh, Vladimir Putin, who clearly now, at least if, if you believe the Amer United States Justice Department, they have confirmed that Vladimir Putin has lied to the president, into his face. 
And while the left predictably is freaking out and hyping up these indictments, they seem to be conveniently forgetting about the time not so long ago when they couldn't have cared less about election hacking. Now, remember when Trump raised concerns about rigging the election in 2016? Remember then President Obama, October 2016, he just laughed it all off, told Trump, stop whining. There is no serious person out there who would suggest somehow that you could even you could even rig America's elections in part because they're so decentralized and the numbers of votes involved there's no evidence that that has happened in the past or that there are instances in which that will happen this time and so uh, I'd advise Mr. Trump to stop whining and go try to make his case to get votes no serious person, stop whining. And by the way, credit to Jake Tapper, uh, because he called out Obama, because this all happened on his watch. He was the one asleep at the wheel. Take a look. You read this indictment and you think, boy, the Obama administration, they really kind of missed the ball on this. I mean, yes, they issued that report, but President Obama said, what did he say? He, he told Putin to cut it out or knock it off. It wasn't particularly strong. Uh, and then there was all this hesitation about warning the American people for fear of looking partisan. Um, in retrospect, uh, doesn't it seem to you that perhaps the Obama administration was at least to a degree asleep at the switch? Now, of course, that's right. And we have said over and over again on this show, we have all known about Russian efforts to conduct election sabotage and chaos for years. Let's go back to 2014. House Intel Committee Chairman Devin Nunes, he warned us about all of this in the lead up to the 2016 election. Again, years before it happened, Obama was president. There were countless more warnings about this from Intel officials and many others. Uh, and excuse me, uh, how many countries hacked Hillary Clinton's email server? Was it China, Russia? Was it the Iranians, the North Koreans? And despite the known risk, Hillary Clinton, well, she decided to conduct official, top secret government business on that private server to the illegal which we know was hacked by at least five foreign powers. And we also know the former Clinton campaign chairman and the DNC, they were easily hacked. Today, Podesta called into CNN to celebrate Mueller's indictments. We'll tell you how stupid he is after you watch this. I think from the beginning, uh, at the heart of this matter were crimes that were committed uh, against individual citizens, including myself, but what's more important, uh, crimes were committed against the American democracy. The president likes to describe Mueller's operation as a witch hunt. Well, they've caught the witches here, uh, and I hope uh, at some point that they will actually be brought to justice. We all know Podesta is nothing but a political hack, and we have known about Russian interference and attempts to create chaos and discord in America, at least since Devin Nunes' 2014 warning when Obama was president. And by the way, Mr. Podesta, the witch hunt is not whether or not foreign powers tried to influence and hack into our elections. Everyone knows that has been taking place for years, election after election. We know Obama tried to influence the Israeli election to prevent the prime minister, our closest ally in the Middle East, Netanyahu, Prime Minister Netanyahu, from being reelected. So the witch hunt is about the phony biased political investigation into whether or not Trump and the Trump campaign concocted some grand conspiracy with Vladimir Putin to defeat your precious Hillary Clinton. Nice diversion. We know in reality, we all know Trump went to Wisconsin, Hillary did not. We all know Americans were connecting with Donald Trump. Just look at the crowd size. And by the way, not with the very unlikable Hillary Clinton with no vision. And how many reports do we need to now show that no votes were impacted? And I can go on and on. But tonight we're asking the question, why announce these indictments today on the eve of this meeting between the president and Vladimir Putin? To me, this timing is suspect. We all agree that Putin is a hostile actor. We all agree Russia is a hostile regime that needs to be held accountable. But we're only days away from the president's long scheduled meeting with Vladimir Putin. So what does this announcement today accomplish other than keeping Russia, Russia, Russia in the headlines ahead of the president's trip? And today the president previewed how this would play out in his upcoming meeting. Let's take a look. We'll be talking to President Putin about a number of things. Ukraine, 
We'll be talking about Syria. We'll be talking about uh, other parts of the Middle East. I will be talking about nuclear proliferation. And we'll be talking about other things. I know you'll ask, uh, will we be talking about meddling? And uh, I will absolutely bring that up. I don't think you'll have any, uh, gee, I did it, I did it, you got me. There won't be a Perry Mason here, I don't think, but you never know what happens, right? But I will absolutely, firmly ask the question. Uh, and hopefully we'll have a very good relationship with so Russia. So the president will be talking about it. And on Monday, the show will be broadcasting from Helsinki. We'll bring you all the details from that very important meeting. Now, let's turn our attention back to the deep state. After first defying a subpoena, Trump-hating FBI lawyer Lisa Page finally did appear before a closed-door hearing on Capitol Hill today. Now, this comes after her Trump-hating former colleague and boyfriend Peter Strzok testified during an explosive public hearing in the House yesterday. Last night, we showed you the countless instances where the corrupt, biased FBI investigator played verbal gymnastics, flat-out lied during what was contentious questioning. And as you might imagine, your friends and the left wing destroyed Trump. Mainstream media were cheering him on every step of the way. Remember, this is a disgraced high-ranking government employee who said he can smell Trump supporters at a Southern Virginia Walmart. Irredeemable deplorables. People that cling to their God, their guns, their Bibles, and their religion. That's, I guess, who we all are. Watch this. It was like really watching something out of the out of the 50s, out of the McCarthy era, era, where you see someone brought up, ordered to ask answer questions he can't possibly answer. It was really an appalling piece of behavior from the leadership of that committee. Well, I'm personally glad that Peter Strzok had an opportunity to talk publicly about this, and so that the American people could see his professionalism, as well as what I think is his integrity. I think it's remarkable that Strzok has act that is actually the most robust defense of the FBI that we've heard from a sitting official. I think that really was remarkable. It was for show. It was for show. The whole thing was for show. We didn't learn a lot yeah. new. The whole, whole thing was odious in a way. The Russian intention was to sow dissent yeah. here in the United States from their perspective, mission accomplished. This is a day that arguably, in the minds of many, may have empowered Vladimir Putin. Folks, you have to view today's hearing in light of what's happened these last 36 hours. President Trump did trash NATO. He shrugged off Putin's meddling in our presidential election. And now his allies in Congress are holding what some say looks like a show trial that's intent on undermining the investigation into Putin's meddling. One thing is for sure, if Russia intended to sow discord in this country, mission accomplished. They, they should be ashamed of themselves. And I do believe if, if anybody watches this, they oh, will no, understand why there will be this blue wave, because people are just fed up with these pathetic, sniveling little cowards. But I was not just confused who the villain was. It was very <laughs> clear who the hero was by the end of the nine hours of pounding this yeah, guy. Mission accomplished under Obama. And look at what the president said to the German chancellor, Merkel, this week, when he said, you ought not be that energy dependent on Russia. And by the way, we have plenty of natural resources and energy that we'd love to export to Germany because that dependence undermines even the mission of NATO. Do they care about government oversight, the Constitution, abuse of power? Do these people care about corrupt high-level actors in the FBI? The answer is pretty obvious. The destroyed Trump media's hatred for the president and his smelly supporters, it obviously supersedes all integrity. Journalism is dead. There's no longer a pursuit of truth.